This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, Sailrite will show you how to make a hatch cover. There are many different styles of hatch covers. This hatch cover uses line at the corners and the line tucks in underneath the hatch to keep it from coming off in foul weather. Let's get started and show you how to build this hatch cover. The first step is to take measurements. We're creating a hatch cover for a Seaward 24. On a note paper, sketch the hatch drawing down and then we'll take measurements of the hatch from side to side. Here it's 21 inches. When measuring from front to back, you need to take into account the hinges at the back of the hatch opening. So you need to measure and include those in your measurement. So here's the measurement to the front. Again, it's 21 inches. Write those measurements down. We'll also need a diagonal measurement. Measuring from the deck, our hatch opening is 27 inches from the corner to corner. And obviously ours is square, so we'll write that measurement down as well. To account for a hem allowance, we need to add one and a half inches to the width and the length measurement and one inch to the diagonal measurement. For this hatch, our measurements equal 22 and a half inches for the length and the width and 28 inches for the diagonal. When you've determined the measurements for your hatch opening, now we'll go to patterning the fabric. We're using a soapstone pencil here to mark on the Sumbrella marine grade fabric. We're measuring out the exact measurements we had, including the hems that we allowed for. Okay, now we also want to find our center. So, 11 and a quarter would be halfway. So we'll mark that like so. And 11 and a quarter. Okay, so we make this line and this line, and the intersection is your center. Okay, and what we want here is you see, uh, if you go from corner to corner on your square, you got 31 and a half inches, and we only want 28. So in order to shorten that up and make it a little bit easier. The measurements that Deb is discussing here are obviously for our hatch opening. Your measurements may be different. Deb's going to use that rubber cutting block on the back side to poke her pen through. Okay, You'll see it so here we soon. Want 28 across, and half of that would be 14. So I have my little ruler here that I can pin, which will pin at an inch. So we're starting here. And we need a halfway point of 14 inches. So we're going to go with this hole here because that's half of our 28. Okay, and then we take, put your pin through there, and in the center of your pattern. And I have a block under here, and you just push your pin right through it. Okay, and then we're here at our 14. So we want to make now this is an easy way to create a very large compass, just taking a ruler and putting holes in it at the appropriate position. You could use a string and tie the string to the pin in a pencil or the soapstone pencil to the end as well. There are other ways you can accomplish this, but this is a good idea, one that you should take note of. Once our material is appropriately marked the right size, we're going to take it over and use a hot okay, knife to cut it out. This. We're cutting it on a top of a yeah, piece of glass like to help prevent damage to the tabletop. If you don't have a professional hot knife like this Engel hot knife, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. This hot knife heats up in about four seconds and cools down in about a minute. So it's perfect for cutting out synthetic fabrics like Sumbrella. Here's the cover complete. We're lifting up the corners to show you the leech line that catches the corners of the hatch. We'll need to place marks on our fabric that are five inches from each edge. That will be where our leech line will exit. Here you can see Deb using that soapstone pencil and marking it five inches from each side of that fabric that we cut out with the hot knife. Okay, we're gonna make three quarters of an inch hem here which is going to go in an inch and a half also, so we want to go at least three, two and a half inches up so that you can still see that line when you hem it because that's where you're going to want your leech line to enter and exit. 
Yeah, this is the underside, so you're not going to see any of these marks. They're all made on the underside. If you use a soapstone, it works real good, and you don't have to even worry about trying to get it off. All right, now we have each one of those locations marked with a soapstone pencil. Okay, so and here Deb's going to explain how it works. Is when you make your hem, you're going to sew the leech line in. We're going to sew the leech line in, and you're going to bring it out at that point. Then we're going to go back in at this point. Your leech line won't be inside the fabric here so that it can catch up underneath the lid. So with a three-quarter inch hem, we want to mark it at an inch and a half. Deb's marking a line here, and this is where she'll fold the edge of the fabric up to match up this line to create the hem on all the edges. This will keep your fabric uniform so that when you go to make your hem, you can take it right to that line. So we'll do that to all three sides, or all four sides. All right, your fabric is now marked, so you can take it to the sewing machine and so create those hems. Leech line now and have it all come out on one corner and um, then we'll come back and pleat the corners. We're going to fit it on the top of the boat and then we'll show you how to pleat the corners to bring them in. Okay, again we're going to bring the leech line out right where we made those five inch points. So what we need to do here is we're going to bring that out there. We're going to stitch up to it. Stop, back stitch to it. Jump over, back stitch. So all the way across here, and then do the back stitch, jump over, and back stitch. We're using the Sayerite Big and Tall sewing machine. However, the Ultrafeed sewing machine will work great for these, and even a home sewing machine will work great sewing Sombrella marine grade fabric. We're using Tanara thread. Tanara thread never rots in the sun and is very chemical resistant. Okay, and then we're going to put this inside. And you want to keep it sew it as tight as you can to the out, outer edge without sewing on it. Because Tanara thread is rather expensive and a little bit more difficult to sew with, most of our customers choose to use a V92 polyester thread, which is UV resistant. It won't last as long as Tanara thread, but it's a lot easier to sew with and obviously not as expensive. You'll also notice here that we're using a roping zipper foot left, which means there's no foot on the right side of the sewing machine, so we're getting that stitch as close as possible to the leech line cord. We were reversing at the beginning and end of each stitch to lock the stitch in place. We're going to do the same thing on all four sides. We are going to skip ahead here. We hope you have the technique down. Uh, we've showed it uh, twice, and you obviously want to do that at each one of the corners, as Deb is showing here in the video. Here we fast forwarded to the final corner where that leech line exits, and the same procedure is done here as well, except for the fact that the leech line exits here and protrudes out of the cover. anchor underneath of it and bring these sides up so we'll go on the boat now and put it on and then we can see where our pleats will end up it should end up right where our corner is to be able to just sew these right up here we're back on the boat again and now we're going to cut out that uh, excess uh, thread that we left in here you can leave that thread in or you can cut it out as Deb is doing here and now we're going to determine how to create the pleats at each one of the four okay, corners now the loops will go right underneath here And you need to mark your five inches because you need at least 
that much of the leech line to, to catch. If you use less, it's going to pop right off. In order to position the cover appropriately for our uh, pleating, we need to uh, pull the line fairly taut, and so the cover stays in the okay. position that we want it to while we create the pleats. All the way around. And there's no way for the cover to come off because the line's up underneath. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down we're just going to bring those corners together, make it into a pleat underneath, like so. On all four corners. Okay, so we're going to bring that together, which will be on the inside. See, this will go right down to that point. And then I'll fold over this way. Come down the other side. And then go right inside the fold here. And work. Come down to the corner. And we have Darken them up a little so you can see them better. Or in this case, I guess I'd be lighting it. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew that inside pleat. Something like so. Okay, and since we have a square uh, distance the same, 21 both ways, we should be able to, with our corners being molded the same, we can just mark each of our corners the same as this. This will be where you sew, not where you cut or anything. You just sew there. So we'll reverse them to the inside and we'll sew the pleat. We'll take the cover off the boat and we'll reverse the line to the underside okay, so of the canvas. Here. So what I'm going to do is get up underneath, make me a dot. Right there, on the opposite side, and then you go from these outer edges here, just go right up to that dot, just like so. We'll now measure that pleat and we'll duplicate the pleat at each one of the three other corners. Okay, you get a half inch and a half there. So you want to come in from your center here and then go up your inch and a half. Make your dot here. And you want to go up from the edge to there. And right here. Once you've done that to all four corners, you're ready to sew the pleats so we have together. Our for our darts, so we're just going to go to the machine, pinch it here in the center, and just sew it right off to the edge. We have the hot knife edge, so you don't have to worry about any of that. It's all going to be to the inside when we get done. Deb's going to pull some of the leech line out to get it away from the corner where she's going to create those uh, pleats or darts. Pull those out so they're out of your way. And you just line up these edges here, so right at the edge to the point. Your sides should lay even too, if you're making a straight dart into here. That way you won't get a twisted cover.
One down, three to go. Okay, and our hot knife edge is on the inside here. Turn it around. We got our pleat. I'm going to do the same thing with the other four. We did not show sewing the other three corners of the pleat, but here it is complete. We'll take it to the boat and fit it on. Let's see how she works. Corners are made with our guards. You can just draw the line tight and tie a knot, or you can use a barrel lock as we're going to do and here. Deb's going to insert the two ends of the leech line through the barrel lock, and then she's going to tie a knot to prevent it from falling off if the barrel lock uh, gets moved past the end of the line. And then she's going to use the barrel lock to draw the cord tight around the hatch opening. The barrel lock can be used on the outside of the cover as shown here in the video or you can actually go inside the cabin and draw the barrel lock tight from the inside. We'll show you that next. Your hatch cover is now complete. Made from Sunbrella fabric, it'll last for many, many years. Everything's better with a blue bonnet on it. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go here, we want to show you how to use the leech line from inside the cabin. And in here you can see where the leech line is coming across the corner, so there's no way your cover's going to come off. And at the same time, you can tighten it from inside here and pull it right down in. The line inside the Thanks, Deb. There are many other ways you can build a hatch cover. Some people use snaps, and then they use the YKK snads that don't require you to drill a hole in any of your surfaces. I'm Eric Grant with Sayerite. We appreciate you watching these videos. Bye-bye.